while you're doing yes. that, I ought to I ought to do a decent introduction. <laughs> uh, just Dr. No, Joe Lash. It's on the right hand side. It's on the right That's hand side it. for everyone. From a science education background, always loved sheep starting at the tender age of six when she woke her mother up at 5 a.m. every morning <laughs> to feed the sheep. Anyway, uh, she's worked, uh, studied agricultural science at Nottingham University, specialising in environmental science, followed by a PhD at Aberdeen, um, researching growth of wool in sheep. And I believe it's career in animal health in various countries. I think that's how it was. And returned to Dorset, southwest England, to commence building her flock of Portland sheep. And she also grows her own dye plants. There we go. Away you go. Thank you. And I also feel a bit of a fraud because I looked at who's here. But, you know, um, I'm going to talk a bit about fermentation dyeing with woad because, yeah, it's not easy. Um, Woad, as most of you all know, has been used for many thousands of years. And if you ever have the opportunity to go to the VNA to have a look at the Devonshire hunting scene um, or the whole lot, range of tapestries, I think it's amazing. And if you look, um, you've got lots of blue, and that will be woad. They only use woad, world, and madder here. Um, and where it's blue at the bottom, it probably was green, but the world has sadly faded as it does. So why did I want to investigate this more in more depth and more scientifically, sort of? Um, I can't use chemicals to reduce woad pigment. I'm on a septic tank. I'm also a Bronze Age reenactor. And so, you know, chemicals just don't really fit with the whole scene for me. Um, many of the fermentation methods seem to have been lost or not recorded. I think woad dyeing back in the day was a black art. And although they recorded madder, the woad dyers didn't tell anybody how they did it. There has been more recent research into methods for commercial production, um, but still using chemicals to reduce the dye. Um, the recorded modern methods for craft dyes on the websites and things are quite complex and muddled. And as different parts of scientific research has been added into it, they've got more complex. And it's sort of like, oh, we'll try this and see if you get a better answer. And nobody seems to be. So what I'm looking for is simplicity for the craft dyer, and sustainability and environmentally friendly way of working. I will do a little bit on the basic chemistry, as it's supposed to be a bit scientific here. Um, I apologise to all scientists, okay, and all chemists, because I know it's really basic. The pigments in woad leaves are indican and isatins, isatins sorry. Um, and when you extract them, you have to remove a sugar group from them by hydrolysis. And that's done by the enzymes actually in the leaves for you. And the indican gets converted to indoxyl. Now, they seem to have lots of different names and I get very confused. So um, bear with us on this one. The indoxyl has to be aerated in alkali to give you the insoluble indigo. You can store it as that or you can go on and die with it straight away. The insoluble indigo has to be converted to leuco indigo, which is white and that's soluble in water. And that's achieved by reducing it or removing oxygen in alkali. You then add the wet fibre and you leave it for a period of time. There's a bit, to me, there's a bit of argument over the length of time. And then you remove it. OK, and the, this is why Marana's having problems using indigo with her eggs is because the particles of indigo get tied up with the fibre. And, and when you remove the leuco indigo, it oxidises the blue indigo okay and it's actually that's why you get stonewashed genes because you're using the um yeah the dyes being washed back out again you get really inconsistent results using um fermentation dyeing if you look over to the right hand picture those were the first balls that i actually dyed and they came out so blue and i thought oh this is easy well, since then, I seem to have been getting nice greys. The one behind is a madder and the other one is a weld. Um, and you also sometimes get real pinky colours. And that's because of a different, slightly different reaction that's going on. OK, um, and this was also just showing the different blues and pinks you can get. 
Now, going back through time, it's really unlikely that this happened. Um, from prehistory onwards, you'd assume that it would work. So this is the method that I use regularly for extraction. I do get quite a lot of pigment out. For this experiment, I picked a load of woad leaves on a warm, sunny afternoon. I chopped them up, which lots of people say don't do. I chopped them up really small. I added boiling water and left it to seep for about an hour. Okay, and that allows the cell membranes to be broken down so you can get the pigment out. And it also allows um, the enzymes to break down to do their hydrolysis on those things. Drain it. I add alkali in the form of sodium carbonate or soda crystals and aerate whilst it's warm. And aerating is literally just shaking it in a, a milk cart. And I used to whisk it, but I find shaking for a while in a milk carton works much better. And then I leave it to settle or I use it immediately. For my drying, I had to reduce it. So I split these quantities into four equal quantities and aerated it, added some honey to help the bacteria to get going, checked the pH, made it pH nine and left it in a warm place. For the second one, I did exactly the same, but I added bread yeast. For the third one, again, I aerated it slightly less um, and then treated it as fun just to see if I could get away with less shaking. And the fourth one, I left it settle to extract the pigment. They were left to reduce for a few days um, and I pH adjusted as pH nine and added honey on day five. I then, on adding the fiber, I added 100 grams of Shetland yarn to each one. And after an hour, I moved one. And then after two hours, I removed the, another 50 grams. This was to see, because everybody says to me that, yes, and in books, they say, just leave it for 10 minutes and you'll get color. Well, I'm not getting that. And I just wanted to check for myself scientifically or more scientifically. Um, on day seven, after adjusting it all again, I added another 100 grams. And this time I left it for 24 hours, which I find quite a good length of time. And I also did another 50 grams which I aired after 24 hours and then returned it to the vat to try and pick up a bit more colour because that's what you're supposed to do, build up the colour and removed it after another 24 hours. Another little bit for groups one and two where there was enough pigment left where I just rinsed the commercial yarn <coughs> sorry, because um, it was very, I was getting lots of greys and I thought maybe it's something else that I'm doing and I'll talk about that in a minute. I removed it again after 24 hours. So these are the results. And this was the one where it was fully aerated. And this was where I added veggies. But sometimes I, I do actually get a um, more rapid um, reduction if I've added yeast. But the colours are actually no different, realistically. Um, this one was where it was less aerated. And somewhat unsurprisingly, um, they went, they really, there was much less colour. And then for here, this is this one, one of the jars that I had, which has settled out the pigment. Okay. So my results, well, after an hour or two hours, to be perfectly honest, you don't get much color. And that's what I'd found previously. So I now know in fact, fermentation dyeing with woad that it doesn't work. And then, went over to this is after a day and you can see that you've got some color the yeast one's a bit variable if you look at it more closely that's my fault i didn't mix it in properly and but it made very little difference leaving it for two days to be honest there's a slight difference but they're also very gray so the last one that i did i'd actually read the ph back before i took them out okay but I'm getting frustrated by my blue gray colors. So I've been thinking about it and I'm getting blue when I over dye weld to give me green. I'm getting really good green. So the blue is working when I'm over dyeing the weld with the same yarn. But I'm still getting blue sometimes, not others, which I'll show you. I've gone back to the books and websites and it might be the type of sugar to feed that, but I'm not convinced about that. It could be my method, but I'm getting it blue sometimes so I don't think the method is the problem. I looked back and I realized that it might be sheep breed, it can be because proteins can be slightly different, but 
Last year, I dyed two lots of Portland in the same vat at the same time, and one came out blue and one came out gray. So what was the difference? Here they are, one's a yarn and one is fiber. And the main difference is, the one that spun was from fiber that had been commercially carded for me. So it had had a mineral oil applied to it. And the same would have happened to the Shetland yarn that I'm getting the greys on because it's commercially spun. The fiber was simply washed raw fleece from my own flock of Portland. So I know it's had no other treatment to it. And maybe that is the problem. But what is also interesting is it's coming out blue and then it's going blue gray. So I think there's something I need to look at the chemistry. But I'm pretty sure now it's the treatment of the fiber before dyeing. I want a little bit more research. I want to improve the control of temperature. I want to try different alkalis, but you've got to be careful of damaging the fiber. I only use wool, so I apologize to all the other fiber people out there. I would try not to get blue-gray on a more consistent basis. And I want to try and extract more pigment. I also dream of getting that deep blue that they were getting in the Middle Ages. My take home messages are, make sure the fibers you are going to use are really clean. Do some basic research, remembering we are all still learning. Keep records of the two because otherwise I would have been completely lost. Most importantly, have a go as any result is better than no result. And finally, I just want to say thank you, Jenny, for organizing this event. And another one is a thank you to Mel Sweetham, whose talk I am really cross I missed, because <laughs> she runs a really good Facebook group where we can share all our knowledge. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much, Show. F4, if anybody wants to. <laughs> that's brilliant. Um, yes, that's lovely. I'm going to say I concur with a lot of those results because I have done some woad dyeing myself. Um, and I've also found uh, Deepak, would you mind sitting down, please? Um, oh, never mind. Uh, uh, thank you. Um, the, the, <laughs> you can put your hand up and ask a question in a minute. If you click on a chair, you'll find you'll sit on it um that's it thank you uh yes and there's definitely something funny goes on with the processing because i've done demos at places when i was not very experienced i still am not very experienced but even so i have done a bit more um all sorts of things i get the lavender color um right that's the early thing that was if it was too hot too alkaline or left too long um anyway we must have a chat yeah. privately about this because yes. <laughs> um, we did we did have I did have a little a group of um, young students called uh, Jeans Blue and it was a, a project for an engineering uh, competition. They didn't come very far, but the next year when I wasn't their mentor, they entered um, for I think the Big Bang competition is it big science, and they came second yep. nationally. So I was pretty wow. chuffed for them. And it was all on looking at different aspects of um, extraction of indigo and using it. So um, some of the experience is not mine, it's theirs. Anyway, thank you very much. Um, now we've no, thank you. used up, we've used up an awful lot of time that we shouldn't be using up. Um, we're going to have an, yes, a, a break now, um, but I will see if there are just one or two more questions before we break. Yes, who have we got at the back there? Debbie. Hi, Debbie. Joe. That, was, that was really interesting. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, here. Um, that was really interesting. Have you come across John Edmund's book, uh, the medieval dyeing book that's got the medieval recipe in it? I've heard come across it mentioned. Um, and I it's it's again not clear. I mean, somebody mentioned the fact that, yes, he's talked about woad dyeing. But most of the recipes don't are sort of a bit variable again. But I must have another look. So yes, well, thank you for reminding Debbie. There was a group of people that actually did the recipe and followed it through. So in the his medieval dime, he explains what he did. Um, and there's yeah. an, also, I would suggest you try couching the woad if you're trying to do it for earlier periods. Yeah, but I I'm loath to do. Yes, I would do that for, if I was doing medieval. Certainly. Um, 
but at the moment I'm trying to find a reliable method for people who um you know the craft buyer because couching takes a lot of time up would be my comment I think I I'll call it indicated okay that's um very, very interesting yeah very interesting Susan yeah. um did you want to say something is it Susan that's got the hand up there Yes, oh, I just it? need to get my headset on. Sorry. Um, just to <laughs> say that um, Brian uh, has a lot of experience of using the urine vat with Woad and I think had considerable success. And um, yeah, that, that's the one that I got the really good results on. I do get better results with urine, but again, I tried to avoid it. Sorry, I interrupted. No, that's okay. And, and I know Jenny, um, Helen Melvin uh, keeps a urine vat at the very far bottom of her garden where people can't smell it when she opens the lid. But uh, that's it's, way. it's a very, it's it's very good process. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's it interesting. certainly is. Anyway, thank you again, Joe. And after all your troubles and things, <laughs> let's hope let's hope our video um, comes out OK and then we can catch up on a lot of this. Uh, and I'll yes. thank you to Jonah for filming all of this in the corner there. It doesn't look like it, but he is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I think we'll, we'll uh, adjourn back to the team suite.